Salam Ashraf, because I know you're looking. Uh, we've just come from a meeting uh, with a government official where we have uh, requested urgent action by our government and the American government to be given permission by the Iraqis to go to Camp Ashraf under their own steam and to talk to residents there to get a clear picture of the violence and brutality used by Iraqi security forces beginning Tuesday of last week. We were told that the United Nations assistance mission to Iraq has requested the Iraqi government to allow them to visit Ashraf on Monday. It is quite reprehensible and the scenes that you have seen uh, on that screen there they are reminiscent of some of the worst atrocities carried out by organs of the state against innocent refugees anywhere in the world. Those of you who are my sort of age will remember seeing scenes of that when the Gestapo and the Wehrmacht liquidated the Jewish quarter of Warsaw, for example. That's the kind of violence and it is a shame to this government and to the American government in particular that so far they have not done anything to stop the violence. I don't care about the arguments about the status of those refugees. Under international humanitarian law, the actions of the Iraqi security forces are illegal and any other UN member state has the authority to take action to prevent what we've been seeing on that screen. I have to tell you that the British government and the American government are especially complicit in those acts of violence. Why? Because we were the powers that gave protected persons status to the residents of Camp Ashraf under the fourth Geneva Convention and we cannot walk away from that responsibility. And although the Iraqis have the prime responsibility for the safety and security of the residents of Camp Ashraf since January the 1st of this year, on the back of written undertakings they gave to the Americans who spelt out the responsibilities under that obligation, they too are complicit. And I have to ask the question, and I hope it's asked in Washington as well, is this why our sons and fathers fought in Iraq to help the circumstances to put in place a regime that will use and abuse its power to attack and murder innocent men and women? Is that why we had our feet on the sand in Iraq? I don't think so. Well, if that is the case, open your mouth and say something. Act. Act now, as we want the British government to act as well. These scenes, these scenes, these acts, in this part of the 21st century are an obscenity. An obscenity. There is no excuse on earth that can justify what is being done to the brave people of Camp Ashraf. 
and we don't want pious resolutions and huffing and puffing. We want action by those with a prime responsibility, my government and this government, to intervene in Iraq to separate those thugs, those violent thugs away from the residents of the camp to stop the, the murder and the maiming that's going on. There is a second concern and that is about the 35 camp residents who have been detained by the Iraqis. The assurance of uh, the governor of the province where the camp is situated is worthless. He says that none of them will be sent back to Iran. Well, I'm sorry, sir, I don't believe you. Your government signed an undertaking with the Americans that you would treat those residents properly and humanely under international law. There's the evidence that you haven't done it. So please don't waste your breath giving assurances which we have every reason to doubt and do not believe that you intend to carry them out. We demand urgently to know where those 35 people are. If they are to be charged with offences such as trying to throw themselves under vehicles or beating their heads against iron bars or taking out weapons which they don't have and shooting themselves, let's have the, know where they are, what those charges are and ensure that they have access to legal, to lawyers as well as to people from the International Committee of the Red Cross which is their right as refugees. This barbarity has got to stop. Silence Mr Obama and those working with him is no answer to what's going on at Ashraf. And I say the same to our Foreign Secretary David Miliband. It's not big speeches. It's action this day to stop that atrocity going on in the deserts of Iraq. That's the urgent thing to do. And that's what my colleagues and I on the British Parliamentary Committee for Iran Freedom are trying to achieve. What the Iraqi government clearly didn't understand is that because of modern technology, the eyes of the world would be on the brutalities carried out in its name and by its orders at the behest of the Iranians at Ashraf. Well, the world is watching, Mr. Maliki, and the world will hold you personally and the government which you lead to account in an international court for those atrocities. We're going to put a stop to this and we're going to stand by our brothers and sisters in Ashraf. Thank you very much indeed.